Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'ad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to what hopefully and most likely is the last video on this channel regarding the Badr Club. As you've probably seen from the thumbnail and the title, uh, the Badr Club has come to an end. And we'll be going into the reasons why a little bit more uh, in this video and discussing a few things that have happened. As some of you may know, you know, uh, we got a lot of flack, a lot of, there was a lot of backlash with regards to the Badr Club. Some people called it a scam. Some people, uh, you know, was just ranting and raving online on Twitter and other places. Alhamdulillah, we dealt with a lot of slander and accusations uh, that were dealt with accordingly in uh, previous videos on our channel. Uh, but now one brother, uh, may Allah bless him, because, you know, this is the route that everyone should have taken rather than, you know, just talking uh, trash online. He took the issue to the ulama, right? He took it to the scholars. Uh, may Allah bless him, because this is something that, you know, whenever you have something which you're unsure of, something happens, who do you take it to? You take it to the people of knowledge. Uh, something that we're commanded to do as Muslims. So we have to commend the brother for doing so. Uh, and then obviously those scholars uh, responded and he then published their answers publicly. Um, we, however, felt like the question that was posed to them could have had a little bit more. Obviously, us being the ones behind the project uh, know best what the project is, why certain things were chosen, what was done in a certain way, so on and so forth. So we asked a similar question to some of the same scholars and also some others. And in this video today, we're going to present to you what the scholars had to say when we asked them about the Badr Club. So before we mention that, I just want to talk a little bit about the issue of taking things to the scholars, right? Obviously, there's a group here in the UK, on, which means they're around the world, and they're known for asking generic questions about specific individuals uh, to the scholars that if a person does this or if a person says this, what do you have to say about a person who says this or what do you have to say about a person who does this and then applying that onto specific individuals. Now, there may be a case where a scholar, because remember, the scholar, he is the prisoner of the questioner, right? He, his answer will be based on the question that's asked. If certain things are omitted from that question, as you're going to see later on, for example, uh, a scholar might know the person who the question is actually being asked about, but by omitting that information about who the person is, it may change his answer or, in fact, the way he deals with the situation. So it's very, very important that when we take things to scholars, we do things in the right way, because otherwise you could end up lowering the scholars in the eyes of the people, because they might see one answer coming from a scholar in, from one person and another answer from another person. But all this is just based on intricacies, small little variables that are present within the question. So it's really important when things like this happen. What should really happen is that both parties are able to go to a scholar, get him to ask them both questions, this is, you know, what do you have to say about this? What do you have to say about this? And then he can give a complete ruling rather than just one party going and getting a thing and the next party going and getting a thing because that can cause or unnecessary... The, or, or that one party can go, but they just have to really... Have a complete understanding of the mas'ala and present it in a way that is in, a, in accordance to its reality. Yeah. That's the thing that is really, really important. So anyway, without further ado, let's not long this out. Let's mm -hmm. get straight into the video, inshallah. Uh, Amran, would you like to... Show some of the messages. So just before, I just want to echo some of the points that you made. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, ma ba'd. So, Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know, you go and ask the people who know. Okay? If you don't know, you ask the people who, who know. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, كُنُوا مَعَ أَكَابِرِكُمْ أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ Be with your, with your senior ones here. The senior ones refers to the senior ones in knowledge, the people of knowledge, the people of the sunnah. You, you're a person is not considered a person of knowledge He's not considered an elder uh, Unless he is upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So this is something that's ma'roof And something that we take seriously Something that we've been doing uh, Something that we've been calling people to do and The reason I mention this is because is The whole kind of thing was made out to kind of be like a scandal It was made out to be like a scandal Like the scholars have shut you guys down And you guys are against the scholars And you have opposed the scholars And it didn't really have to be a situation like that um, it was a very easy fix Like If you know us to be brothers That are Salafi brothers mm. Brothers who love knowledge And the people of knowledge mm. Then the fix is very simple It's like Well this is what the people of knowledge have said What do you have to say 
maybe you should go and speak with them or maybe you should take on board what they've said but it was it wasn't really seen like that kind of situation and you find that amongst our Salafi brothers we have a sickness in our heart uh, it is a sickness of wanting people to be misguided and this is something that Allah جل, he described uh, the kuffar as having this characteristic that the the al kitab the people of the book they wish they hope for you to become misguided after you become guided like and this comes from a place of jealousy Allah says and you find that a lot of people I'm I'm sorry you have to call a spade a spade like why is it that so many people are so excited at the concept of myself leaving Salafia or or, 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 or doing something that's a mistake and let's take it to the scholars and, oh look the, the guy's gone now he, look he's left Salafi he's not Salafi no more like, actually, we should be sad if someone makes a mistake or more so becomes misguided well, alhamdulillah no one left Salafi here alhamdulillah yeah. you know, there were a lot of people that did come they, they had genuine yeah. concerns they yeah. addressed the concerns in the, in, the, in the correct way and so on and so forth and there was a lot of things that we did change actually mm-hmm. because of those concerns before this scholars issue even popped up mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and even before the, before the project even started, we spoke to people from knowledge and to yeah. address certain questions and concerns that we had. And right, because I, the, the funny thing is at the beginning, and I'll go into this in a bit more detail later. But I actually was concerned about the name. The name. Was I not concerned about the name? Yeah. And I was, and I called and said, I think we might have to change the name," because I actually saw a video from Sheikh Muhammad Isham Tahir. He was one of the ones that was asked. But then we took it to one of the Mashaif. We took it to one of our teachers, and um, we 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 you know. Everyone has people that they go back to on a regular basis. There are some mashaykh that we go back to uh, specifically regularly for all of our queries about our data projects, about our businesses, because they just know the projects in and out. They know us. It's just easier. It's easier. We don't have to explain things very well. And I remember what the answer I was given was, it's completely fine. Don't worry. Go ahead with it. Does that make sense? Uh, this is something that's needed. Furthermore, it was praised that we're trying to you know, make people... Uh, look at the Sahaba as role models and so on and so forth. So th- the point of the matter is that we've been going back and forth with with the Mashaykh Safi that we do, but it just didn't have to be this big scandal, okay? And I'm going to read a statement of Ibn Baz towards the end, um, so you guys can you know, take some advice from this great Sheikh uh, uh, that we are all drinking from the fountain of you know what he really left behind in terms of the Nashati had with the Da'wah in the you know in the previous century. The other thing I want to mention. So the first thing is to go to the scholars. And when you're, when you're going to the scholars for people that are brothers that are that are Salafi brothers, it's not a thing where it's like us in uh, you know us versus you, you versus them, you versus the scholars. It's it's supposed to be there for islah to fix things, to to make amends. Especially when you know the brother's a Salafi brother, mm. he's gonna take it. It doesn't have to be a scandal. That's it's the second thing. More important thing. to make an excuse for him because if, mm. if if a Salafi person makes something you see to be a mistake or mm-hmm. something wrong, there's a different there's a, there's a difference between the mistake. Of a Salafi and the crime of an innovator. One hundred percent. Some people they conflate the two, and that's the problem. And this leads me to my third point, which is because because what can be a mistake for a yeah. for a Salafi can be a crime for an innovator if they did the exact same thing. Right. Um, the point that I wanted to make, which is the third point leading on from that, is that the scholars they say, al mufti, asirul mustafti. Al mufti, asirul mustafti, which means that the mufti, the one answering the question, is a prisoner is a captive to the question of the questioner what we mean by that is that if i want to ask you a question if i want to ask you a question of Bakr, yeah, um let's just say you're a sheikh you're a scholar may allah will make you one I mean. but I, I, if i ask you a particular question and i leave behind one information one fact that could change the whole fatwa you don't know the reality you're trusting me to come to you with what with the correct understanding, understanding. but your job is not to really go deep into me and work out whether I have, you know, presented the correct question. Your job is to answer the question that's been presented. presented. Although you find a lot of scholars, there's a subject called Adab al Mufti wal Mustafti, where this is a whole subject which is studied how to question, how to ask questions, and how to answer questions. And you know, scholars do many a time w- w- give me more details when they notice or they suspect that mm. something's a bit off. But generally speaking, they're going to ask the question that was presented. Answer. Sorry, yeah, they're going to answer the question that was presented. They necessarily haven't looked at the Badr Club, looked into the research of it, the people that are behind it. They're just going to be told, this was asked, and this is the answer based on what you've asked. And what was sad, and this is what, where I felt like there was a big problem in the way that the question was asked, was that it had no mention that the brothers behind the project are Salafi brothers. Mm. It had no, it, there was no, remember, as-siyaq min al muqayyidat the context uh, is from the things that will help you understand and, and, and understand the meaning. The scholars have another principle, which is al-hukmu shay'un uh, far'un an tasawwuri. 
that the ruling that the Sheikh gives is a sub branch that comes and stems of fully understanding the situation. Imam Ibn Qayyim he said half of fiqh is the hukum, the ruling, knowing the shara'. The other half is knowing the situation. So not only that, some of the scholars actually know us personally. We've met them in person multiple times on video series with them. They've got our numbers. Mm -hmm. Like if the, if they found out that it was about us, surely they would have contacted us to say, by the way, I've heard this about you. Can we clarify so on and so forth? And as you guys are going to yeah. see, one of them actually mentioned. So he had no idea that it was about us. Yeah. So 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 the 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 the, the point that's being made here is that I feel like it was a vital f information that sh that was omitted from the question, and I'm not saying it was omitted intentionally. Mm. I'm not saying that, but it was omitted, which made the, 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 you know, the question a bit problematic. And that was neglecting the fact that the brothers are Salafi brothers. The brothers are brothers who call to Salafia, who've been refuting Ahlul Bid'ah. It's funny because one of the scholars that was questioned was Sheikh Fahad al Fuhaid. And I messaged, when I messaged Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, you know, by the way, like, as in, he's, got, he's got a kitab called uh, Al Jinayatu al Islam, which is a refutation. On the people that speak about going against the rulers and That was one of the main books I relied upon In my refutations of the Khawarij When we were going back and forth with the issue of the rulers So it's like we've, we not only quote the Salafia It's your works that we're using Sheikh To quote the Salafia The reason why that's important is because The question, a big heavy kind of part of it Was the numbering, right? 313 By the way guys, we're going to show you the question The question answer from the Mashaikh and whatnot But it's important that you understand this introduction A big problem was the 313, right? Now, if you see a question that's written where like there's a club, it's called Badr Club, the guys are teaching this, 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 and there's 313, it's called 313 Roman, and there's 313 spaces, and it costs 313 pounds, and it's open for 313 hours. Oh. I'll be honest with you, that would look shady to anyone. You think, well, like, do they believe that 313, you know how. As a special number. How the Brailvis is 786, it's like Bismillah. Bismillah. Or not. Well, I don't know if that's a Brailvis thing. Is that a Brailvis thing? I, but but From what I, understood, yeah. I know the thing, and people do magic based on numbers. Like you know, well, like if you mm. bring me like a tatwiz and it's got numbers straight away, I'm like, yo, that's that's like, is in my in my mind straight away, that's magic. Does that make sense? You think is it baraka? Is it like something where they think there's some like you know lucky numbers thing going oh, on? Yeah, is it because of worship? Is it, is it like some new bid'ah that that's forming? But if you say there are some Salafi brothers who've opened up a project, they're Salafi, okay. They've opened up a project where they call it 313 real men, 330 pounds, this, 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 this. For marketing for, yeah, the 313 has got nothing to do with tabarruk. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with seeking blessing from the number. It's got nothing to do with at ta'abud, which is worship, or at taqarrub ila Allah azza wa jal, trying to get close to Allah azza wa jal through worship. If you, if you, those are important things to mention because I think anyone who knows us, anyone who knows us, will not for a second f have thought. That that numbering was anything to do with barakah mm. Or that they thought it was a lucky number Or that they thought it was a number You know, where it's a worship I think everyone, because I, I understand If maybe like, you know, a Brelvi came out with it Or a Sufi, you'd say, well, what's going on? What's all this numbering stuff? I think everyone else would have just understood that Oh, they're, they're looking at Sahaba's role models It's tafa or it's optimism Because there were 313 Sahaba So we want to be, you know, we want to emulate And walk in the footsteps of the Sahaba uh, You know, the fact that 313 it's just, it's just, It was just marketing, it was just easier We were like, it's just going to be something interesting That there was 313 companions that they will just make It open for 313 hours And we'll charge 313 it was, it was a marketing strategy Because, you know, like When there's that flow and consistency with things like that it's just easier to stick in the minds of the people. It was, it was a marketing technique and it was something which was like an opt to use as something like as optimism. They call it tafa'ud in Arabic, right? Clearly it worked. Say that again? <laughs> clearly it worked. It clearly worked, alhamdulillah. But, but the, the point I'm mentioning is that when, when you see, if you mention mm. that this is not taqarruban mm. ilallah, this is not a ta'abudan mm. or, you know, seeking tabarruk from, from, from the number, the sheikh is not going to say this is bid'ah. This is, the, this is the important point that They might say it's wrong mm. They might say it's better to stay away from it But they're not going to say it's bid'ah Because if you hear some of the fatawa of the mashayikh Some of them are saying this is bid'ah Some of them are saying this is you know I'm, I'm worried that this has come from the enemies of Islam And brothers are like Oh you lot are the enemies of Islam The scholars have said you're the enemies of Islam That you're mubtadi'ah Akhi, that changes the whole thing Because I had a few brothers message me I had like two brothers message me And they were like Akhi, they, they were very nice brothers They were very nice brothers And they said Ya akhi um, well, like your beloved to us, we just want to let you know the scholars have said this is a bid'ah. We advise you stop it. This is a bid'ah. And I was like, Akhi, ma hiya haqiqatul bid'ah? What is the reality of bid'ah? And do you know the definition of bid'ah? 
Because this is not bid'ah. Like I'm telling you, I did not. I did bid'ah is when you do something in the religion to get closer to Allah. It's you're doing it as an act of worship, and every and this shows the deficiency of, of a lot of our Salafi brothers when it comes to their understanding of these masail. And this is why sometimes the Ikhwanis run circles around some of the brothers because they don't have diqqah in knowledge. Like they don't have they don't have that they don't have that depth. And that bub, that precision knowledge. Not that I'm saying I do, but come on, bro. At least you understand what bid'ah is. When the, yeah. the scholars, when they gave that fatwa, they did it because they thought we're getting closer to Allah. Bid'ah is not just simply introducing something new. Okay, bid'ah it has a very precise definition. I'm gonna pull the definition out, Bakari. I feel like you want to make a point. No, I was gonna mention. I think one of the things that probably led to people having that uh, assumption. Uh, or that understanding rather uh, is because I think a lot of people thought this was a da'wah project which obviously we made very very clear this is not a da'wah project from our side of course there are elements of da'wah right everything that we do has an element look at five star umrah it's a business but of course umrah has an element of da'wah too we give da'wah on the actual trip itself but the umrah side of it is separate that's a business even I'll give you a small example I set up a garage recently alhamdulillah it's called Akhi Autos in West London right the very first meeting I had with my partners before we set it up was all about sins, how sins affect the business, how we need to make sure that we're on point with Allah. How we, like all of this, same way, for example, the very first operation on the Badr Club was Operation Allegiance with Allah. It was all about how Islam is the foundation before any of this. Before we talk about six figures, relationships, physical health, mental health, all of that, you have to, be, you have to come correct on your side with Allah. And that's just standard. Like as a Muslim, that should be the standard thing that you do in every single thing. It doesn't necessarily mean this is a da'wah project now. So that's, I think, one thing. Because the thing is, we did clarify it in many videos, but clearly people were very selective about what they saw, what they watched, or what they chose to believe. But just to make it very clear, one more time, this is not a da'wah project. Of course, there's elements of it. We're talking about manhood. Of course, it's going to be taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. But there's so much more to it. There's so much more to it to do with business, how to run a business, how to come up with an idea for a business, so on and so forth, to do with relationships, physical health, mental health. Again, all of them, there's elements. It goes back. The religion says this, the religion says this, but there's so much more to it as well. It's not just based on the Quran and the Sunnah. So, just to make that very, very clear to people, also. Barakallah feek. So, I just wanted to pull out this definition by Imam Shatibi Ta'ala, because this is the, the definition that is most common, most famous with regards to bid'ah that a lot of people are aware of. There are other definitions. Imam Abdurrahman bin Yahya al Mu'allimi Ta'ala, he, he breaks it down as well. Uh, but this definition is, is the famous one. One thing, there's one common thing that you'll find in all the definitions. He said, Tariqatun fi dini, that bid'ah is a path in the religion. Mukhtara'atun, that you've invented. So it's a path that you've taken the religion which you've inten- invented. Tudahi a sharia. It resembles the sharia. It's not a sharia, but it resembles the sharia. Yuqsadu bi suluki alayha al mubalagha fi ta'abudi lillahi subhana. What you're intending, look at this now. It's not just that it's a path invented. In the Sharia, but it's a path invented in the in the religion that resembles the Sharia, and you are intending from this path that you've invented that resembles the Sharia a ta'abud lillahi subhana. You're intending to worship Allah through this, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because we could have avoided that whole conversation about is this bid'ah or not just by mentioning these are Salafi brothers that are not worshiping Allah through this number 313. And when you leave the question open like that. Then of course it's going to because there are a group of people that do try to worship Allah through numbers, when, but that group is not Salafis. When you take out the fact that these are Salafi brothers, then straight away what happens is that this is a bid'ah. But when the moment you mention this is Salafis, Salafis don't worship Allah through numbers. And when you clarify that the brothers are not doing it through numbers, the reason they're doing it is through marketing. We want to know is it permissible as a marketing strategy? Is it permissible to use this number as optimism? That is the question that should have been asked. Okay, that should have been asked, but it wasn't. And and, and, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because it frustrated me that people didn't understand what bid'ah was. Okay, it frustrated me that people didn't understand what bid'ah was. And the people of bid'ah will use that against you and run circles around you. Just to clarify, sorry there, when you say uh, people didn't know what bid'ah was, you're not talking about the scholars. Because as we no. already established, the scholars, they're the prisoners of the question that they were asked. So we're talking about people who took from that and then yeah. people who knew the reality of what it was yeah. based on their own research and yet took the... The, the speech of the scholar and try to apply it to it 100% 100% because as you said as you said what was the name of this video the end of the brother club. the end of the brother club so I've accepted the fatwa of the sheikh that said change the name mm. 
which we're going to go we're into. Gonna, we're gonna come to that. But the, so, so so I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is the fact that people are saying say bid'ah, and I'm not holding the sheikh to account for saying that because of the way the question was presented, mm. and that's why it's very important to mention that these are brothers, Salafi brothers that are even even if you don't believe we're Salafi, okay, you know, khair inshallah ta'ala. But at least mention this is not tabarrukan, this is not ta'abudan. This is not taqarruban ilallah. This is not for barakah from the number or whatever have you, whatever have you. I just wanted to mention that. I think it's important to mention. I didn't want this to become a lesser or anything like that. Like I said, I've taken a step away from the da'wah so I can focus on other things. But I was kind of just, you know, I felt compelled to just share this benefit with you guys. Going to the first shift. Yeah, so, so, so the scholars that we asked, okay, um, I sent the question to quite a few. Should we read um, the question out first? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll put the question on screen um, And what I'll do is um, put it in the description. I'll put it in the description If anyone wants to go through it in details Inshallah ta'ala But um, in essence The question, and that's just to make the video swift and smooth In essence, the summary of the question was uh, Number one, introducing uh, myself uh, And, and, and uh, explaining you know, that I am a Salafi and whatnot And you know, uh, just to give that siyak So the sheikh doesn't get thrown off You know, whatever have you um, some of the scholars who knew me, I, I just I didn't mention that introduction. But then I explained, and I think the way that I explained the project, I said it's a, it's a personal development project. I said this is tatwiru dhati, you know, which is personal development, which is you know basically how to improve your, your your life in you know particular areas using certain techniques and whatnot and so on and so forth. Um, and I explained that the the objective was to work in the areas of finances, uh, mental health, physical health, relationships, primarily. Uh, you know the the, the the deen because none of this can you can't be a real man without without that I explained that to the mashaykh then I'll read this part of the question because it's really the main part of the question right I said وَسَمَّيْنَا هَذَا الْمَشْرُوعُ نَادِي الْبَدَرِ I said we call this project uh, the brother club لِأَنَّ أَصْلُ الْمُشْكِلَةِ فِي الصِّفَاتِ rujula because the foundation of the issue that we're trying to tackle here is Characteristics of manhood. Was Sahaba and the companions are akmalu rijal. They are the most complete and perfect of men. Ba'dal anbiya after the prophets. Wa wadidina and we hoped and we wanted an shabab that the youngsters yet khuduna sahaba that they take the companions of the Prophet sallam uswa as a as as role models for rujulati al kuffar as characteristics as sorry as, as examples of real men instead of taking the kuffar as examples of real men. And that's it. Ikhtarna. And we chose this number 313 in, uh, as a number for the amount of people that we were allowing to participate in the club from the angle of optimism. Uh, is, you know, when, you, when, 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 when we say there were 313 Sahaba Badr, our objective, what we wanted was, um, you know, there were 313 Sahaba Badr, we want to be like them. It's about quality over quantity. Okay? لِأَنَّ أَهْلُ بَدْرٍ Because the the, the people of Badr, they were our salaf fi rujula in, in, in manhood. They were our role models in, in, in manhood. And then we wanted that the youngsters siyakun mithlahum, so that they could be like them. We wanted them to be like these is Sahaba at Badr, fidiri in terms of the religion, wal umur, al haya, and affairs of life. Waqtana raqam, and then we also selected the number 313, lid for the payment, min bab at taswiqi faqat, from the angle of marketing. Only لَيْسَ مِنْ بَابَ التَّبَرُّكَ We didn't do it from the angle of seeking barakah from the number من, ال, من العدد uh, أو, تق, أو تقرب إلى الله عياذا بالله Or to seek closeness from Allah Azza wa Jal I said ما حكم المشروع What is the ruling on this project? That's what I asked the Mashaykh So the question was Sorry the answers that I got from the Mashaykh Were divided into three examples There, there, there were three types of answers that I got from the Mashaykh Okay um, Shall I mention the Mashaykh that we spoke to first or should I mention? Okay, no, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll mention it after. So the uh, the the answers that we got from the Mashaykh were three types. Does that make sense? Um, the first category was mm -hmm. the Mashaykh saying it's completely allowed. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll mention who said that in a second. It's it's allowed. The project is allowed. The number is allowed. The name, the is, name allowed. is allowed. As in that description I gave, they said to it, "This is good." They cleared it. That's the first category. The second category is the ones who said, and surprisingly, there's quite a few of them. I need more information. Or I need time to think. I need to reflect. Um, and, um, and I still haven't heard back from them their conclusion. Okay? 
Uh, one of them said he's going to talk to me when he meets me, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the other one said, you know, I need to reflect upon this. And the we're third meeting him next month. We're meeting him next month, inshallah ta'ala. And the third one, uh, he said, um, he asked me some more questions. He said, I need more information. And I really appreciate that because it shows the importance of tafsir. And what was shocking was that all three of those mashayikh who said, I need more information, ones that know us personally. Mm. So the reason why that's important is that Knowing me personally already gives you context, but mm. they were like, "We need more information. Mm. We need more." Okay, because hukmu ala shayin, the ruling of a matter is farun, a sub branch and tasawuri. It is a sub branch from actually knowing. It stems from knowing the actual reality of the situation. Then the third category was mashayikh who said, uh, "Change the name and change the number." So there was different responses, but one common thread that ran through all of them was what. The project is fine mm. And what, f what was interesting about that Was because some of the brothers Were saying Shut down a project mm. Leave the project None of the mashayikh said Shut down the project Some of them actually made the for the project Yeah They said it's a good project mm. But what they said was what? They said They said what? Name and the number for Some they, of them Yeah they said Name and number change it And they said what? Uh, change the name Badr Club mm. Now I'll give you, sh sh shall I just tell them what we did? Okay, uh, so I'll tell you what we decided to do and then I'm going to show you the fatawa. We decided that even though some of the mashaykh allowed it. Because mm. we could easily just turn around and say, look, this sheikh said that, it's, he said there's no problem with it. And it's not a small sheikh, Jadid, as you're going to see, he's actually a very big sheikh. Yeah, I'm going to say, this is what we've decided to, to go with. Uh, you know, it's a different sort of opinion. You know, you can't do inkar or on, is on issues of uh, ijtihad, so... That's, that's it, and it's a difference of opinion within the, within, the, within the scholars Yeah, and we could have said we're also waiting for the other mashayikh to give us their conclusion mm. But what we decided to do was we decided to change the name and the number We decided to change the name and the number, okay um, We decided to change the name and the number for a couple of reasons Number one, it's the safer path mm. if it's, the safer, it's the safer path And this is something that is quite important in the Shafi'i Madhab <laughs> Chef Ibeth are known for all, you know, always trying to take the, the path which is safer. which is safer. Okay. Generally, the Muslims should always take the safer path, right? The Prophet ﷺ told us the halal is clear, the haram is clear. There are some issues that are clear to some, not clear to others. You know, it's best to just avoid those all together, right? Because if you flirt with things that could possibly be haram um, or potentially bid'ah, you, you, know, you, might end up falling into you might end up falling into it So we said It's not going to hurt us To change the name So instead of calling it The Badr Club We're going to call it the Brothers Club The Brothers Club <laughs> And instead of there It being £313 Which is going to increase the price £320 And instead of Restricting the number to 313 We've just left it unrestricted now We've opened it So it was it, We actually Got to the point Where we've reached Maximum capacity but now you guys can sign up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's a very simple fix. It's a very simple fix. And we've made the changes across most of it. There may still be certain areas which we haven't seen, like in one particular email, we might still say the Badr Club or whatever. But and so I think some of the artwork might still need to be yeah, changed. Everything that we're on top of, we're, we're in the process, in the yeah, transition period. In case someone watches and they're like, oh, you said that you changed it, but, you know, in one email that this was sent the, or whatever, you know, at the bottom in the logo, it still said yeah. Badr instead of Brothers, like... Don't worry, we're, yeah. we're on that. We're on that. Uh, we're in that transition period. So inshallah. The, the point we're making is a very easy fix. Okay, mm. this, it didn't have to be this massive scandal. That's my point. That's my point. Does that mm. make sense? So the first easy reason was for it to be on the safer side. The mm. second reason was when we're telling people about manhood, who are the greatest men? Scholars. Scholars. The scholars are the greatest men that are alive today. So it wouldn't make sense for us to bump heads with them. The third reason was some of the mashayikh. Pretty much all of the mashaykh that I reached out to know me personally. Mm. Not all of them, but the majority of them know me personally. And some of them know me very, very personally. So I just felt like from them, those who advised to change the name, I was like, it doesn't make sense. This is my sheikh. I've made videos with him. Mm. There's videos with me and him online. I've told, I, I watch his videos. I tell people, go watch his videos and learn from him. Mm. And then he's giving me an advice. I don't take it. Respect for the teacher. Yes, respect for the teacher. Even though, even though I've got another sheikh. Mm. Who said to me, No, it's cool. But it's like, this one, I'm like, this is my sheikh, though. Mm. I, I've, as in, I've, you know what I'm saying? So, out of respect, and this is something that's, that's lacking nowadays, you know, I decided to To run with it. And it doesn't harm me. I'm just going to change it from the Badr Club to the Brothers Club. I'm just going to change mm. it from, to be honest, it benefits us. Because, Abaka, isn't it? You were saying, like, you were saying, like, it's so funny, yeah, that we actually, the registration closed, mm. 
and you know, um, I mean, it, it didn't officially officially close, but it would have closed because we would, you know, we we had reached the three hundred thirteen. But it's like Allah has made a means for us to open it up for more people, and Qadr Allah increase the price. <laughs> Say Allah barik, guys. Yeah. Say Allah barik. So let's go into it, inshallah ta'ala. So the first category was the was the Sheikh who mentioned that it's allowed, and it was none other than Sheikh Badr al utaybi Sheikh Badr al utaybi is ma'roof. He's from the Senior scholars, the older scholars, is one of the well-known students of Ibn Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala. And um, if you know, you know. If you don't know Sheikh, Sheikh Badr al-Utaybi, then I don't really want, know what I can say to you. But I asked him that same question, and as you can see, the Sheikh, he said, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ لَا بَأْسِ He said, there's no problem. There's no issue. And he said, أَعَانَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي, مش- في مَشْرُوعِكُمْ And may Allah aid you. With regards to your project, I said, Barakallah, fi Sheikhana Al Fadil. I said, May Allah bless you, O oh, eminent Sheikh. Simple answer, right? Straightforward. I could have said, Sheikh Badr al Utaybi. His name is Sheikh Badr as well. Interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, I could have said, Sheikh Badr al Utaybi. Which one of you is going to talk? You know, which one of you is going to say that? But, you know, I would prefer to just be clear before Allah Azza wa Jal. The next sheikh was Sheikh Asim al Quryuti, who is one of Sheikh al Bani's prominent students. In fact, he was one who wrote the biography of Sheikh al Bani. He was one that Sheikh al Bani, when he would come to Medina, he would come to visit Sheikh Asim. Okay? So, Sheikh Asim al Quryuti said, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, hayakum Allah. He said, Bi khusus al mashru' He said, With regards to the specifics of the project, la mani'. There is no prevention min al kasbi fi from earning from it. Okay? There's no problem here. He said, أما التسمية, but as for naming it 313, تحتاج تأمل. It requires a bit of thought. It requires reflection. And I said, بارك الله في شيخنا. سأكون في انتظارك. I'm just going to be waiting for you. Okay? And the Sheikh has not yet responded. This was on the 11th of September. It was Sunday. I sent him this message. But we're going to see Sheikh next month anyway, inshallah ta'ala. So, as you can see, even though the Sheikh, he said, it requires a bit of thought, but the project is fine. The other sheikh, and by the way, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to ask Mashaykh from different parts of the world. So I wanted to ask Mashaykh from Pakistan, from Somalia, from from uh, from uh, from you know Kuwait, from Jordan, from Saudi scholars that are from the Sheikh Albani camp, Sheikh Ibn, uh, Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Baz camp, the Al Hadith camp. I really wanted to do that. Why? Because I wanted to show people that we're not restricted to just a, a few scholars. Scholars, you know, everywhere. Does that make sense? Um, or whatever have you. So then the next, you know, I asked Sheikh Mashhur, he hasn't responded yet. Uh, I sent a question to Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Tahiri, he hasn't responded yet. Uh, so I won't really go into that. Um, but uh, now let's go into the category, or, or let's continue the category of the Mashaykh who said, I need more information. Um, Sheikh Muhammad Al Ishaqi, um, I asked him uh, the question. Um, he said he was going to respond to me. Sheikh sent me a message. Voice note, uh, you know, he said, uh, Amran, just send me more information. You send me more information, send me your website, show me the videos. So as you can see, look, we've got nothing to hide. We sent the Sheikh the, the website link, we sent him the promotional videos. I said, these are the, you know, I sent him three of the videos. Um, you know, I guess these are the ones that people probably, s- ones people probably have issue with. So I sent him the ones that, you know, show the cars, that show the, uh, the, the shooting and whatnot and so on and so forth. But I'm still waiting for the Sheikh to respond. But the reason I'm showing you this is so you can see, guys, scholars, they take their t- sometimes they take the time with an answer and they will ask for more information. So it's never wrong to give them extra information. Then, and that Sheikh is from Somalia, okay? And he's the son of Sheikh Abdul Kirim Hassan Hosh. And he's one of the like major, major senior scholars um, in that part of the world, in Somalia, and to be specific. Um, well, I scholars in Somalia are amazing. Well, I really, really wish I could understand Somali so I could benefit from them. Uh, the next Sheikh I asked was Sheikh Diyaullah. Sheikh Dia Allah from Lahore in Pakistan. And um, the Sheikh, he gave me a beautiful answer. Uh, so he said, Amma su'ala al- al- tarhat. He said, as for the question that you've asked, you know, with regards to the marketing and, and whatnot and so on and so forth and the project and whatnot, uh, he said, in and within itself, the project is, 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 is not wrong. Okay? It's not wrong. Um, but he said, need more information with regards to the way it's being done. He's like, you know, you told me what you're teaching, but there's a way because now you're attributing it to the Sahaba. And now, you know, you know, 
it's serious, so you have to explain it. So, the, but the Sheikh gave me another advice, which I really want to share with you guys, which I really found, which was profound. Well, I really, really found that it was, it was, it was, it was profound. You know, the Sheikh he said, um, uh, he said, وأنت بعد, uh, he said, وأنت بعد لست رجلا عاديا. He said, Amran, just remember one thing: you're not like an ordinary person. Like you're saying, it's not a da'wah project. But just remember, you're not like an ordinary person. You're a person who's known for the people when it comes to da'wah and so on and so forth and whatnot. And you can't just do any old project that you want to do. You have to be conscious because the people are going to be bit. They're going to be, can, they're going to be affected by you. And they're going to make you a role model for them. Does that make sense? Um, with regards to the affairs in their life. So you have to make sure that the example that you manifest before them is the best possible example. This is a responsibility that you have. So basically take it seriously And I, that, that kind of affected me And that made me go back and reflect You know, like did we present it in a bad way? Did we show too much dunya? Did we come across in that way? Like initially our objective was really just to sell the course And I think in our marketing If someone's fair They would see that it wasn't all dunya But it's just the dunya kind of videos Are the ones that went viral because of the hate mm. uh, But then that still made me reflect and think Okay, I have to preempt that now Knowing that those are the things that are going to rub people the wrong way People are not going to be fair with regards to the analysis of us So it's going to popularize those particular videos And then eventually that is what it's going to be seen mm. as Us pushing and that could have a bad effect So like, you know, people, I guess a lot of people maybe wanted to even communicate that point to us But they did it through assumptions and not messaging us directly But here when the Sheikh said that Like that thing he said had affected me the whole day And it's gonna, and it obviously made me go back and reflect And it's going to have an impact in the way that we market in the future So that was the second category Which was the Mashaikh that said we need more information As for the Mashaikh who said change the name You know, Sheikh Faisal al-Jasim Who is the Sheikh that, you know, like I said, you know, personally Met many times We travelled all the way to Kuwait just to, met, just to visit the Sheikh Got videos on our channel with him A whole series called uh, Ask the Sheikh or Speak to the Sheikh That I've got with him And in summary, you know, you can see the question We'll put it on screen The Sheikh's point was He said, Imran, change it um, You know, Badr is an Islamic thing Ma'arakat uh, al-Badr It's from the big things of al-Islam If you're doing a business Just keep them apart He said, I get that you're doing business Just the religion and the business make two, make two separate things Which, which affected me Wallahi. So and I actually asked the Sheikh I said Sheikh I said um, You know uh, I'm going to You know Sa'aqoom Bi nasihatika ya Sheikh Bi qadri istita'ati With the best of my ability Does that make sense? Walakin Sheikh I want to be sure But I just want to be sure ya Sheikh With regards to your hukum Bi hukum shari With regards to the religious ruling Hal hadhi tismiya Amir Misa'a Hal hadhi tismiya Hal hadhi tismiya وَرَقَمَ uh, الْمُشَارِكِينَ And the number of the people that are participating in 13 Is it أَمْرٌ محظور? Is it something that's haram? Or are you just talking to me preference? And the Sheikh said I'm mentioning this just so I can be fair He said he believes it's haram But the reason I did that is because he didn't say it's a bid'ah Does that make sense? Even though bid'ah generally speaking is something that is haram But it's like just it, it, He's coming from more from the angle of this could be a sin Not an innovation No, Sheikh Fahad al-Fuhayd the same question And Sheikh Fahad al-Fuhayd he stuck to what he said. He said, look, the, uh, my, my ruling is still that uh, change the name and whatnot and so on and so forth. And he sent a voice note. And um, I'll be honest with you, brothers. I just don't feel comfortable sharing the voice notes of the Mashaikh. I hope you guys can see that I've tried to be open. I'm sharing. It's just, you know, the voice of the Sheikh. I haven't asked his permission if I can share his voice note. It's something I personally don't feel comfortable just playing a voice note of the Sheikh. Um, People do these kind of things They call up the mashayikh They don't know if they're being recorded Or whatnot, Or so on and so forth I mean I've, I've, I've shared their messages with you But I, I just I don't know I don't feel comfortable sharing the sheikh's audio The sheikh's fatwa The brother shared it anyway Does that make sense? Uh, it didn't change in the sense where we're, we're still listening to him We're changing the name So I don't really feel like anyone Has to think that we're being sneaky By not sharing it But I hope you can trust me enough to, And you can go back and ask the sheikh If you think I'm lying He said the project's fine Keep the project Just change the name Change the name and change the number. Does that make sense? So, in essence, those were the three types of a tower. It's fine. Need more information. Change the name, change the number. But the project is fine. And we decided to be on the safe side. Change the name and change the number. But Sheikh Fahad al is also Sheikh Dalal Persi. When he was in the UK, we went to his classes at Medina College. We went to visit him in his hotel room. Recorded a whole video series with him. The Qadr Allah Ma Shaf Al hasn't been released yet because we needed it to be translated. Uh, it takes tr long to do translations. But... Um, like these are mashaykh that we know, innit? Like it's like it was just frustrating because it was like, 
we know the Sheikh. Like if you just message the Sheikh and said, Sheikh, this is Brother Imran, you know, Anta Ta'rifuhu, you know him, Ya Sheikh. I can, I can imagine Sheikh Faisal Jassim would be like, one second, let me call him, let me message him. Mm. Like the Sheikh, the Sheikh knows me. Does that make sense? Um, so it just seemed like a bit of a scandal. So I don't know, Bakr, I would like to read a statement by Bubaz. Do we have time to read the statement? I mean, we're way over time anyway, so sure, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, Ibn Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, you know, he's, he's talking about how to treat the mistake of, a, of your Salafi brother, okay? Because at the most, at the very least, you can say that what we did was something that is a difference of opinion. At the most, you can say it's a mistake. Not to be that, you can say it's a, it's a mistake. I've ho I hope, hopefully, you've, you've, I've explained that, right? So he said, فَالْوَاجِبُ عَلَى الدَّاعِي إِلَى اللَّهِ He says, obligatory upon the one who is calling to Allah and يُرَغِبَ النَّاسَ فِي الْعِلْمِ To encourage the people towards knowledge في حضور دعوة علماء أهل السنة ويدعوهم إلى إلى القبول منهم and to call them to the gatherings of the people of knowledge and the, uh, who are from the people of the Sunnah and to call them to accept from them and take from them ويحذر تنفير من أهل العلم المعروفين بالعقيدة الصحيحة والدعوة إلى الله عز وجل and they should be cautious and they should be warned he's talking about the da'i it's obligatory for the da'i to stay away from, be warned from causing the people to run away from the people of knowledge that are known for the correct aqidah sahiha and da'wah ilallah and according to Allah Azza wa Jal. I'm not saying I'm a person of Ahlul Ilm or whatnot, but at least I'm known to, to be a person of correct aqidah and da'wah to ilallah Azza wa Jal. He said, وَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ لَهُ أَخْطَاءٍ And every single individual has mistakes. مَا أَحَدٌ Yeslam, there is not a single person which is safe from mistakes. فالواجب أن ينبه على أخطائه بالأسلوب الحسن. It is obligatory that this da'i, whoever it is that want, that is seeing a mistake from his selfie brother, that he brings this mistake to the attention of he, of of the person who made the mistake بالأسلوب الحسن in a nice way. ولكن لا ينفر منه. But don't warn the people against him. Don't make the people run away from him. Whilst he is a person from the people of the Sunnah. But rather direct him towards good. And teach him good. And this person that you're trying to correct, he should be advised in a gentle way. With regards to his da'wah, to Allah. وَيُنَبَّهُ عَلَىٰ خَطَئِهِ And he should be alerted and notified with regards to his mistake. وَيُدْعَ النَّاسُ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَطْلُبُوا مِنْهُ الْعِلْمِ And you should tell the people, go and take knowledge from him. You should call the people to carry on going and benefit him from this person. وَيَتَفَقَّهُ مَا دَامَ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ And to benefit from him as long as he's a person of the sunnah. If he left, if he left the sunnah, then of course. But as long as he's a person of the sunnah, the shaykh is saying, carry on telling the people, take from him, benefit from him. Okay? Uh, وَيَتَفَقَّهُ ما دام من أهل السنة والجماعة فالخطأ لا يوجب التنفير منه. A mistake does not necessitate that you make the people leave this person. And that's an important point. A brother makes a mistake. You might see, for example, like a lot of people attacking Ustad Abu Taymiyyah, okay? Because he spoke about a sheikh that some of the mashayikh have what? Spoken about, okay? So the, the, the most you can say about Ustad Abu Taymiyyah is that he made a mistake. That's the most you can say. But is it Ustad Abu Taymiyyah? Are you, are you now going to take the mistake? Of the person that he spoke about, that he recommended, that he advised, and say Abu Taymiyyah is like him. Or, I mean, does Ustad Abu Taymiyyah even know that mistake that that Sheikh made? Does he does he defend his mistake? Is it even a mistake? Was he, the Sheikh himself possibly misunderstood? Allah, Allah, I don't know these issues. But the point we're making is that the most you can say about Abu Taymiyyah is that he made a mistake, and the mistake does not necessitate that now the, he has to be boycotted and abandoned. ولكن ينبه على الخطأ الذي وقع من what is obligatory the Sheikh is responding and mentioning is that you notify him of the mistake. That's your job. Tell him, you made a mistake, brother. Does that make sense? And he's also saying, don't do it publicly. If he's a selfie, brother, don't do it publicly. You don't need to do it publicly. Does that make sense? فَكُلُّ إِنسَانِ لَهُ أَخْطَأَ And the Sheikh mentions again, every single person has mistakes. وَلَكِنَّ لِعْتِبَارَاتِ لِمَا غَلَبَ عَلَيْهِ But what you give weight to is that which kind of overcomes, that which is, which is more. Does that make sense? وَبِمَا عُرِفَ عَنْهُ مِنْ الْعَقِيدَةِ الطَّيِّبَة and, and, and what is known from in terms of his good aqidah. So in other words, the Shaykh is saying, what you look at is, are his mistakes more than his good? Does he have correct aqidah? Or is his good more than his, his bad? If he has correct aqidah, then his good is more than his bad. And that's what you give weight to. فالواجب, he said, it's obligatory. Now look at this. التعاون, to work. على البر والتقوى, in piety and التقوى. Uh, والتناسي عما قد يقع من زلة وهفوة. And to ignore. And to put aside. 
the mistakes that have happened. He said, if your brother made a mistake, keep working with him and just forget the mistake that he made. At tanasi Does that make sense? Ignore it. Put it aside. Min zalla, from his slip and his hafwa, his error. Man dhalladhi yaslam. The Sheikh says again, who is the one who is safe? Al-muhim an takuna da'wa salafiyya ala tariq al-sahabati radiyallahu anhum wa ardahum wa atba'ihim bi ihsan. What is important is that the da'wa has to be salafi, salafiyya upon the way of the sahaba and, and the tabi'een. He said, fadda'i ila Allah wal-alim al-muwajjihu lil-khayr. He said, as for that one who gives da'wah to Allah and the alim, the, 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 the scholar, was, what, what is upon, uh, who is what? Who is directing people towards good? If he makes a mistake, he has the word of ijtihad. And I don't believe I'm much, I don't, I don't necessarily say this hadith applies to me. He said, asaba lahu ajran. If he gets it right, he has two rewards. Ala tariqati salafiyati tariqati ahli sunnah. This is talking to the scholars. If a scholar makes a mistake, who is a mujtahid for him, he gets, he gets one reward. If he gets right, it's two rewards. I'm not saying I'm a mujtahid and I fall under the hadith. Uh, he said, madama muwahidan. As long as he's a person upon Tawheed, he wants good. He said, He said, I advise you to work together. And to be gentle with regards to da'wah. And having good assumption of your brothers in Ahl Sunnah. And what? To refrain from doing things that would damage his reputation. By staying away from things that would damage your self, your brother's reputation. But fix the mistake in an upright, in an upright way. And now the Sheikh tells you how you, people should have gone about it. He didn't, he didn't say put it on Twitter, make a YouTube video, spread it. The Sheikh is telling us how we should have gone about it. Because the particular brother made the video, even though we say Barakallah, we're going to the scholars, his claim was, but I put it on Twitter, and now I've gone to the scholars. I, or like, it's not hard for a Salafi brother to get my contact number It's not hard for a Salafi brother Who knows Salafis to get my contact number To speak to me It's not hard It's one of the easiest things to do Does that make sense? My message is right here We know the message that we pray at Masjid Furqan in Hounslow So and then to go to the scholars And spread it without what, you know, whatever have you The Sheikh says Bil muhadithati baynakum Speak amongst yourselves Bil ittisal al hatifi The Sheikh even says Connect on the phone. Biziara, <laughs> go visit. Go visit the brother. Go if you really are concerned. Get on a plane, visit him. Jump in your car, go visit him. Wabil mukatibat, bil mukatibat tayyiba. Write letter, text message, email, a nice one. Hatta tazul al wahsha. So that what the uh, the this 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 wahsha can go. Wahatta ya tadihul haq. And 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 do this. Until the haq is clear Until the mistake has been removed He said what is the objective of this Is it to damage reputation To take paybacks Or make people's reputation go bad It is we are obeying Allah and his messenger I'm obeying Allah and his messenger By correcting the mistake of my brother And I want my brother to obey Allah As well as his messenger by correcting his mistake And this my brother is This is Ibn Baz Rahmanullah ta'ala you can find this in his Fatawa, volume 19, page page 27. Ibn Baz. I don't know what else you want me to say. Barakallah I think that will suffice. Um, no doubt this is not the end of the matter. We're g- there's going to be more coming our way. I can already uh, you know, uh, imagine it. Uh, but for us, I think this is it now. Alhamdulillah. Like we're just going to keep keep it moving, do our thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I just um, want to mention one thing. Like, Can I say something? Yeah. You know the day when we were speaking to the Mashaykh? Mm. Even whilst the Mashaikh, some of them were saying, no, fix this, what not. Like, what was my reaction? I was happy. I was happy that day. You know why? Because yeah. speaking to people with knowledge is just so much joy. Mm. It's just so much joy. Does that make sense? So it's like, I really want people to get this concept out of their head of trying to like, are these guys with the scholars or not? Or back? Like, I, don't know, I just feel, I get that feeling from brothers. It's like, these are not with the scholars or what not. Like, calling to themselves. Or, like, brothers, we love the scholars. Like I said, the, the mashaykh that were contacted are like, known personally. Mm. And another sheikh who I'm not known to personally, Sheikh Muhammad Sham Tahiri, but like, that's a sheikh I love so much. Like, I listen to his lessons almost every single night when I put my daughter to sleep. Mm. I've taken his video clips with Translate and put them on my own channel. So it's like, um, it's like 
it's not us versus them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, I'm, and I feel like a lot of people made, that, made it into that kind of a thing. I feel like what a lot of people struggle with is when they see someone else who uh, is claiming to be Salafi but isn't a copy and paste version of them. Mm. And there's some unorthodoxy in, within the realms of Salafi. Like you're different, but you're still within the realms. It's like, wait, how can you be different and still be within the realms? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not from Saudi Arabia. No, no, no I'm saying you have to be from but Saudi that's Arabia. That's what I'm saying. I'm not from Saudi Arabia. I don't wish him marks. I study from scholars in Pakistan. I study from scholars in Somalia. Yeah. Also, I benefit from scholars in Kuwait heavily, heavily. The Jordanian Mashaikh, we benefit from them a lot. Mm. You know, like, I'm sorry, I'm not from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's not what I meant. But as in, the point I'm making is that just because we're unorthodox, we do things a little bit different. A lot of people don't like that. But as long as it's within the realm of Salafi, as long as, as, long as you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, you're able to speak to scholars, get them to verify it, get them to clear it before it goes ahead. That's the main thing that should be there. Anyway. And that doesn't mean it. I don't love the Mashaikh that are upon the Sunnah. You could be, you could, you could be, you know, in the Antarctic for Alim of the mm. Sunnah. We love you. Mm. Does that make sense? We'll benefit from you. But it's just people have just got one mode of Salafi in their mind. Khair mm. inshallah. Mm. We'll end it there. I hope you guys benefited. And don't forget, spaces have reopened, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah. Uh, spaces have reopened if you are interested in signing up to the Brothers Club. Because obviously the Brothers Club has come to an end. Then you can do so at the link below www.thebrothersclub. <laughs> I want to refute for that watch. It's going to take a while. The brothersclub.com. Anyway, see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace.